This is a GCSE video about radioactive decay. Some isotopes are unstable. When we have an unstable isotope, we say that it is radioactive. And a radioactive isotope will randomly decay over time. When we say decay, we mean it changes somehow and it gives off a type of radiation. There are three types of decay, and they are called alpha, beta, and gamma. These three types of decay are slightly different from each other, and they each give off a different thing from the nucleus of the radioactive isotope. The first one that we're going to talk about is alpha. During alpha radiation, the nucleus of the radioactive isotope emits two protons and two neutrons. They're all bunched together, and we can also say that it emits a helium nucleus, because that's the same as saying two protons and two neutrons. So obviously, if you're emitting protons and neutrons, then the mass and the proton numbers are going to change of that particular atom. So, for example, if you have radon, that is going to change into a completely different atom. And it's going to give out a helium nucleus. Now you can write your alpha decay like this, or you can write your alpha decay like this. And that is the Greek letter alpha. Beta decay is slightly different. Beta decay involves emitting an electron. What happens inside the nucleus of the atom, obviously electrons aren't usually inside the nucleus, so an electron can't immediately be emitted from a nucleus because there aren't any there. So what has to happen first is the decay, and the decay turns a neutron into a proton and an electron. The proton stays inside the atom and the electron is emitted as radiation. So, for example, you could have carbon-14 and that would change because, remember, you're creating a proton from a neutron, so you're going from a neutron to a proton number, so actually the proton number is going to increase, which is going to change the element. The mass number is going to stay the same because you are converting a neutron into a proton, so the mass of that stays the same. So the only thing, the only number to change is your proton number, and then we can say that you emit an electron of zero mass, and we say that it has a minus one proton number to account for this difference here. Um, now, again, you can write this as an electron, or you can write it as zero minus one, a beta particle. Finally, gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is just energy. It's not an actual physical particle like the other two, it's just energy. So it doesn't have a mass number, it doesn't have a proton number, it's just pure energy. So, for example, you could have argon, and if you were emitting energy, you would still end up with argon. Same numbers, same numbers, and you would get a gamma zero, zero. And this isn't a particle, this is just a, a wave of energy. So in summary, an alpha particle is the big one. And that is a helium nucleus. Two protons, two neutrons. The beta particle is a tiny little one. 
and the tiny little one is just an electron. And a gamma, gamma radiation is just pure energy. These are the three types of nuclear radiation. So you may very well be asking, what difference does it make and why do I care? Well, what a particle is made up of and what it can do are very closely related. You may very well know that radiation is dangerous. If you spend a long time inside a nuclear reactor or you go to a place where a nuclear weapon has been detonated or you go to Fukushima, it's not going to be very good for you. Now, the reason that it's not very good for you is because different types of radiation are ionizing. Ionizing means that they knock out parts of atoms, and so they give those atoms a charge, so they usually knock off electrons. What that means for your cells is that they get damaged and the DNA inside your cells gets damaged, and often that can lead to cancer if it happens in a large enough dose. Now, different particles are ionizing in different ways. The most ionizing particle is the alpha particle. The second most ionizing is the beta particle. And the third, the least ionizing, is the gamma. Okay, so the other thing that we need to think about is their size. So we know that alpha is the most dangerous, it can cause the most damage to our cells. And that gamma is the least, but we also know that alpha is the largest. So if we have the size here, large, small, no size at all for the gamma because it's just pure energy. So the reason that that matters is because large things can get stopped much more easily. So, for example, if someone is trying to hit you with a vehicle, this is you. But first of all, they've got a large bridge to go under, but with small arches, and they're trying to hit you with a big truck, a medium car, or a cycle bike, a push bike, then first of all, that truck isn't gonna fit under that bridge, so he can only get that far, he can't hit you. Second of all, the car might fit under the bridge, but then he's gonna get trapped by all these tangles of roads and paths over here. So the cyclist, because he's smaller, he can fit through all the gaps and he can make it to you. So a smaller particle is able to travel through more things. So if we apply that to our radiation, then we can have something which is called penetration depth. Penetration depth for the larger particle, the alpha particle, is uh, much shorter. So alpha particles are stopped by skin or paper. If I had an alpha particle source shooting this way, I could put a piece of paper there and the alpha particles would just get stopped by the piece of paper. They would not be able to come through this side. However, Beta particles are slightly smaller, so they can go through skin or paper, but they can't go through just a few millimetres of aluminium. That says millimetres. Gamma rays. Gamma rays are just pure energy, so it takes a lot to stop a gamma ray. It can travel through skin and paper. It can also travel through aluminium. The only thing that can really stop it is a thick amount of lead. So although alpha is the most ionizing and therefore the most dangerous, it's actually not that bad for us because it has to actually get inside our bodies before it can do any damage because our skin will stop it. However, beta particles can get through our skin, so they're more dangerous for us. They're also more ionizing than gamma, gamma rays. 
and gamma rays can travel a long distance and they can travel through most things. So if you're exposed to gamma rays for a long time, then that can be quite damaging. So to recap, there are three types of radiation that can be emitted from the nucleus of an atom. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is the largest, and it is a helium nucleus. Beta is just an electron. And gamma is just a ray. A gamma is just pure energy. Released as a wave. Alpha particles are the most ionizing. Gamma rays are the least ionizing. But gamma rays can travel the furthest. And alpha particles can hardly travel any distance at all. We'll look more at the behaviour and the uses and also the safety involved in dealing with some of these radioactive isotopes next lesson.